Hello YouTube. <coughs> Today's the day I show off the pictures I got uh, from the first two rolls of film I put through my Pentax S1A that you watched me rebuild the shutter on along with the camera I used this light meter which I did a short video uh, on a repair I made to it so I ran two rolls of black and white film to this camera with its replaced shutter and I got results alright so starting with not that one but this one Pull out a, just a few that I did here. Now, as usual, I don't know how the resolution is going to be going from photograph to digital. But here we see one first, one of the first pictures. Now, I, with this camera, I used uh, sure it was Ilford 125 black and white film. Now I made a mistake and I didn't set the ISO speed to the right to the right speed. I had it set for 400. The film was actually 125 ISO, so I had to let the darkroom know so they could correct for that. So assuming that you can see these well enough, there is a picture of a local uh, engine show. Now, I'm sure you're not going to be able to see all the detail, but this one has a, a pretty good example. Now, on this one, the first thing that stands out is this edge right here. Now, I don't know what, what caused that. Um, I'm going to look at the negatives here. The negatives themselves look pretty good good. I am going to say that that is I don't, I don't know that the shutter is obviously not working perfectly. Uh, it looks like the shutter either sped up at that last fraction of a second uh, cutting off the light or something else happened I'm not I'm not really sure but this is a picture of a tractor uh, the focus is very good image is very clear uh, ever so slightly underexposed but uh, I prefer that look uh, it brings out I think a little more detail and keeps areas like the sky from just totally blowing out um, this is a little overexposed a little washed out but still the uh, it's clear, it's in focus. This one does not show, at least doesn't show clearly, any deformation along this edge. And then there's another view, and this is a, a powered saw, this is a hit or miss engine driving a big old uh, buck saw. Very slight change in the grayscale along that same edge. Uh, again, pretty good. Actually, the focus is very good. Uh, it was a it was a an overcast day, uh, so most of my exposures uh, were not in direct light. They were in hazy light, um, fairly bright. Most of the exposures were at f16, f11, f16, um, towards the higher end of the speed scale. This thing had, goes up to five hundredth of a second, and it was generally a uh, five hundredth or a two fiftieth. Uh, in most cases. There's another standing back view of a portion of it. Uh, again, very good clarity, nice detail. Uh, sky is a little bit blown out, uh, but otherwise all the foreground looks really good. I like a little bit of underexposure. I think it deepens the image a little bit. Another picture of a truck. And again, we have that, that shadow along the edge telling me that the shutter at that last fraction of a second is doing something 
out of the ordinary. I think it's snapping shut faster. Uh, I'm not really sure. And here we have uh, a pretty good image. Close up of a corner of a truck. Uh, we see no real change along the edge here. So apparently this shutter is malfunctioning but not consistently. Um, the rest of the image looks pretty good. Uh, got good detail, slightly underexposed. Again, that's that's kind of how I like it. Uh, it's, focus is very good. Again, focus is very good. This is the detail on the hood, or, hood ornament of... Uh, I don't remember what the car is. It's got a Greyhound for a hood ornament. Again, we see the shadow along the edge. Uh, otherwise, it's a good photograph. This is a photograph of just a, a park bench. Um, slight shadowing here with the, sh with the shutter malfunctioned. And it almost looks like from right to left a slight darkening of the image. Now that implies to me that the shutter started out very quickly and then, s no, that's not right. Started out slow and gained speed. Uh, ultimately snapping shut somewhere around here and cutting off um, the the full full depth of the light. Um, and I'm not sure why that is. I couldn't even take a guess because the shutter, if you remember from the video prior uh, or a couple of videos ago, uh, when I put the shutter together I got a ripple in it. Um, so the shutter could be reacting from that. Um, I was the shutter was less than perfect when I was gluing all the things that needed to be glued. Um, my gluing was not the best. It was pretty good, but it was not the best. And it has that ripple in it, which you really can't see. If you could see this clearly, you can see there's a couple of spots on, on the curtain uh, where I obviously got some slight glue residue where it shouldn't be. Uh, there's the stiffener and shows a slight slight bit of glue leaking out from the edges where it was pressed together. Another stain. Uh, but it works and it works very well. I'm not sure because at this speed, at actually at any speed, I really wouldn't be able to tell if it was doing something different at the end or not. So I, I'm at a loss as to exactly why I'm getting that uh, shade. Or it could have been, well, it would affect the whole image if it was because of the, the difference in the ISO. But I'm still calling this a victory um, simply because I made a shutter. I made that thing by hand. I installed it in a camera that's um, uh, that's nearly as old as I am <clears throat> maybe even a little bit older now this is from the second roll this was 400 speed uh, Kodak uh, Tri-X shot at 400 I made sure of that um, this is a, a close up of a faucet you can see uh, the sky blew out a little bit background's out of focus however the uh, faucet itself is very sharp. Um, this was a semi-sunny day. And another one of the same thing. Uh, a little overexposed. Another one. Bench, tree, uh, open sunlight. This is shaded. Focus is good. A little overexposed. Now this is bright sun. Uh, this image is uh, a bike path along a river. I like this. Um, sky is, it, it blows a little bit, it couldn't help it, uh, but you can see there's some texture in the clouds. The clouds were away. Very good detail everywhere else. You can see the grain in the wood. Uh, shadow is nice. Uh, very clear image. And again, slight shadowing along that edge. This, if you can read it, is a no swimming sign on an iron bridge near where I live. 
Uh, we got a slight shadow again. <clears throat> but this is, uh, you could almost say this is underexposed, a little dark. Uh, but the detail is excellent and the uh, focus is very good. This is a bridge, part of a bridge. Um, I shot just because I like the, the, the busyness of the pattern. Very slight shadow, more on the upper portion of the edge. Um, excellent focus. Um, it's a good, good pick. It's not terribly exciting, but it's a good pick. This is overexposed. These are some weeds near the road. <coughs> Uh, almost almost no shadowing here. Uh, this one could have stood to be a little less exposed. Uh, okay, so I got cut off again. I ran out of memory. Imagine a digital anything that runs out of memory now. Anyhow, I was only going to show a couple more images, and they were all pretty much the same. Uh, pretty mundane stuff, uh, but good, good overall image quality. Uh, just with that shadow along the edge. So what that tells me, well first of all it tells me that my shutter works. A handmade shutter installed in this camera works. In spite of the fact that it's got a little bit of a ripple in it. Uh, I don't know how much of a, of a difference that really makes. Um, the only observation from the image quality is that it appears that the, the shutter is slamming shut uh, a lot faster than it's opening. It seems to, as, as it travels across, that's the wrong color, as the second screen travels across, when it gets to the end, it very quickly shuts. You can't see it. I can't see it. Uh, but it must be happening. Cause it's, it's certainly an absence of light. Um, it's not an abundance of light even though the light seals on this are pretty iffy. It wouldn't hurt at all to replace this. It's got some rusty crusties left over from the original seals. Uh, but the bottom line is the camera works. Uh, I'm, I successfully made a shutter. I'm very proud of that. Uh, even with its defects and its problems uh, the shutter works the image, and it creates good image quality the light meter apparently is very accurate. Uh, I would have done myself a favor uh, to pay more attention to my ISO setting, uh, which is along the edge here. Um, but overall, I'm going to call this a complete victory uh, with only um, some technical issues that I might be able to work out. Perhaps not. A little tweak of the shutter tensioners might fix that, might make it worse, I don't know. Uh, but as is, uh, I'm very happy and satisfied. And I got some images that if I really wanted to play with them, I could crop them and they'd be fine. Uh, so, so I'm pretty happy. Um, and that is really all I wanted to share. And that concludes this, uh, this video series on the S1A uh, shutter replacement. Um, one thing, if you've got one of these <coughs> and you're going to try and use it, I, ha I wound up having to put a little tag on the back where I will see it. This says ASA question mark. Because, uh, ISO. I grew up in the age of ASA. Um, because as I said, I, the first roll of film was 120. Well, Ilford 125, I shot it at 400 and it had to be corrected. No noticeable difference really. Uh, the people, the excellent people at the darkroom uh, compensated for it and got me some good images. Um, and there you have it. That's it.